the truth about the curse of the pharaohs. It is rare that one does not hear talk about the story of the curse of the pharaohs if the ancient Egyptian is mentioned, and the stories are numerous, some of which are known and published, such as the death of Howard Carter, the discoverer of the tomb of Tutankhamun, who was killed by a mosquito bite. There is a more famous incident, and if one wishes, let him say more catastrophic, which is the accident of the Titanic, and it is reported that a mummy was placed on it to transport it to the United States of America, after it caused successive disasters in Britain, and ignited fires in more than one location or place in which it was placed. Perhaps the closest thing to talking about the curse of the pharaohs is what happened in Egypt about two months ago, on the sidelines of the transfer of royal mummies from the Egyptian museum located in Tahrir Square in central Cairo, to the museum of royal mummies in the Fustat area, and the subsequent series of train accidents and fires. some between them and changing the location of those mummies. However, despite denying the idea of the curse of the pharaohs, this does not negate that there is a wide area of ambiguity around a number of ancient Egyptian papyri and texts, which stated that death will befall anyone who disturbs the sleeping pharaoh in the tomb. and these are warning texts that may be in the future. In this context was the statement of Dr. Khaled Saad, the Egyptian tourist and archaeological expert, who indicated that it is not excluded that the ancient Egyptian was familiar with secret sciences such as the science of magic. It is proven that the ancient Egyptian was very proficient in a number of sciences, and there is talk of his reaching what we can metaphorically call now poisoning of the atmosphere, which is the method that was followed in all burial ceremonies that took place in ancient history, by using the substance arsenic. And with the closure of the cemetery, it was suspended in the air for a very long time, and if the place was open in an unscientific way, the person would suffer an epidemic, blood poisoning, or skin ulcers. In all cases, the question remains, did the Egyptians know the way of black magic, or did they excel in the world of white magic or scientific magic? The worlds of magic and their intersections with the sciences of the pharaohs. The first man attributed many incomprehensible or justified phenomena to the unseen, and linked that to magic, especially in the field of medicine and medicine. The ancient Egyptian believed that disease is an evil spirit that inhabits the body, and that healing must take place by expelling it. The ancient Egyptian excelled in the sciences of alchemy, which the English scientist Newton talked about in particular in newly discovered papers. For example, the pharaohs knew anesthesia, used in anesthesia, and they used to prepare it by crushing marble stone and mixing it with vinegar, as Professor Mandrawi explains to us in his previous research referred to.
Next, in modern times, chemical sciences proved the effect of this anesthetic, as marble is a compound of calcium carbonate, which is affected by the acetic acid found in vinegar and forms carbonic acid. They used to benefit from the effect of carbonic acid resulting from the chemical reaction during its rise in causing local anesthesia. However, it is certain that the pharaohs excelled in what we can call white magic, that is, magic based on scientific foundations that no one was able to discover until now, including, for example, the way in which the stones of the Great Pyramid were glued without adhesive, and were those emptied stones, some of which weigh two tons, through complex physical processes that modern sciences have not yet known. Nor have natural sciences discovered them yet? The proven fact is that the walls of the temples of the pharaohs, including what remains so far, recorded the inventions of the 20th century, such as hovercraft, for example, and the methods of building enormous temples in the city of Luxor show how the ancient Egyptians were able to harness nature with mechanical and mechanical means and methods in physical and chemical scientific theories for the benefit of man and humanity and they called this kind of scientific magic talismans and alchemy, and for this reason the pharaonic priest was often called the word magician, as in the Quranic account of pharaoh's magicians were scholars according to religious accounts, Wali another fact about the pharaohs. My regards. Gamal El Shorbagi.